on another segment of SRH Access Facebook Live. We were here on Wednesday with Dr. McIntosh, and we are back again for a twofer, <laughs> two in one week. We're super excited because we have clinical manager Jennifer Bowden with us. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. First Thank time you. on, and we're really excited to have you yes. and just hear from you about some of the most frequently asked questions when it comes to scoliosis because we know that our nursing staff really gets these a lot from parents yes. and from patients, and we just kind of want to get that all out the open and talk about it. Okay. So, to kind of start things out and be a little broad, what is the difference between an ambulatory care nurse mm -hmm. and an inpatient nurse? Really, um, we use ambulatory care here, but really you could say a clinic nurse. I think that helps a lot of people um, when they're understanding the difference. Mm -hmm. But the clinic nurse is who sees you in clinic when you come to see the doctor, come to get your x-rays, you know, come to do PT, you know, all of that stuff. Um, and then the inpatient nurse is the one who takes care of you um, after surgery. Okay, cool. That's good to know because I think parents, you know, if this is your first time coming to the hospital, you're seeing a lot of people. Yes. And it's good to know that distinction. Mm -hmm. So who will a patient be seen by during their first clinic visit when they come here? So the first clinic visit is the doctor and the clinic nurse. <clears throat> and then usually that doctor has um, either a nurse practitioner or a physician's assistant or a fellow or a resident that will also kind of tag along. But it's the doctor and the clinic nurse. Okay. So specifically for a scoliosis patient that's coming here, you know, maybe they were at school and got a screening, depending mm -hmm. on their age, obviously it's very different depending on the patient, but what happens during that first appointment that maybe they can expect to, is the type of screening that's happening or that kind of thing? During the first appointment, usually if the kiddo does not have x-rays, we'll check some x-rays. Um, but usually before we check x-rays, we'll do a clinical exam and see where we say, okay, bend over, touch your toes, and check for scoliosis. So we check for, um, you know, a rib prominence, uneven shoulders, and just a good once-over check and see what's going on. Okay. And then usually if we're worried about the clinical exam, then if they don't already have x-rays, we will check x-rays. So then when a, when a parent and a patient leave, leave um, clinic and they're going home and they're kind of talking about whether they have to come back for another appointment, is the communication with the doctor's nurse or is it more with our front desk people? What's kind of the interaction that they would it's have? It's both. Okay. It's both. The doctor will give you a time frame when he wants to see you back. Mm -hmm. He'll say, you know, you know, we'll see you in another six months. We'll see you in another two years. Or we don't need to see you unless you're concerned. Um, and so they will leave the room. The nurse will kind of follow up with the patient and the family, answer any other questions, and kind of reiterate the plan going forward. And then you will. You'll leave out of that room, and then you'll check out with our um, front desk staff, and they will get you scheduled. Great. So we've kind of talked about the clinic and the actual appointment. So I think a lot of questions come from surgery, yes. scoliosis surgery. We know that not every patient gets scoliosis right. surgery. It really just depends on the case. But that's definitely where a lot of anxiety probably comes yes. for yes. parents. Um, so what if parents have questions regarding surgery beforehand? You know, it's maybe it's the night before or mm -hmm. it's a week before and they don't have an appointment yet. Or what is, who do they contact? Who do they talk to? Is it the nurse? Is it, what can they expect with that? So that would be the clinic nurse and truly, um, you know, families are always encouraged to call. Mm -hmm. Families are encouraged to literally write their questions down so that they can empty their brain out onto a piece of paper and then feel like they're resolved and they've gotten all their questions answered. The clinic nurse is always happy to answer questions. If it's at night or like on the weekends before mm -hmm. surgery, you could definitely call the main number and talk to one of the nurses on the inpatient unit. Okay. Um, and they will be happy to try and answer your question as best they can. Okay. Um, but they, we really encourage our families to reach out, call us, with any type of question. Great. So let's kind of get into it's day of surgery, kind of things going on, and, and obviously there's people are concerned, the parents are worried. Yes. Their little one is going into surgery. So where do parents wait while the child is in surgery? Parents can wait truly wherever they'd like. Um, usually the, the kiddo will get a room on the inpatient unit. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, we'll kind of get them ready before they go down to the actual operating room, and the parents can wait in their room up on the inpatient unit. We have a very nice surgery waiting area up on the fourth floor um, that's really calm and quiet and kind of removed from all the hustle and bustle mm -hmm. around the operating room and the inpatient unit. Um, you're welcome to go, you know, anywhere in the hospital. You can have lunch, you know, breakfast, anything like that. 
Um, you just have to stay on campus. Okay. So you can wait wherever. Um, we will give them a pager. Okay. So if we do need them, if it's time for updates, we will page you. And we know that that pager only works on campus. And so if they are paged, where is it that they're supposed to go? Is it to the room or to the waiting If they're room? paged, they go to um, the front desk of the OR. So okay. of the operating room, there's a secretary there that will like either do it via phone or you know via nurse an okay. update sometimes they will call up to um, the fourth floor waiting area if they know that the family is in the fourth floor waiting area okay. um, and do it via phone there's a special phone there and a special area that's quiet and private that you can talk okay on. so i mean a lot of times if, if these kind of updates i mean is this something that the doctor's saying we're you know we're going good it, it might be a little bit longer what yes. are some of the updates that are maybe they can yes explain? our team in the or you know and the docs do a great job of keeping mm -hmm. the parents updated and i think that's very important for all parents mm -hmm. because um you know when we go, take a kiddo back to do spine surgery it takes about an hour to get set up and ready and right. so no we, we don't really start until you know it's it's set up and ready and that can take a while right um, so usually they give you a call <clears throat> and let you know we're actually starting. Um, and then the updates come about every hour and a half to two hours. Usually once the surgeon's done with um, all the screws, you know, they'll call and say, we're done with the screws, we got to put the rods in. Usually, you know, they'll call you again when they're done with the rods. Mm -hmm. And then they'll definitely call you and tell you they're closing up. Okay. Uh, closing up can take a while, too. And then um, they will call you and the surgeon will actually speak to you once the surgery is done. You were kind of talking about how the, um, when, you know, where to go, like on the, at the um, surgery check-in and, and all of that. So these families, they're obviously seeing kind of a walkthrough of this before surgery. So let's kind of like back up a little bit and okay. maybe talk about parent and patient come. I mean, is it, are they checking in a day before? Like, aren't they going through kind of a list of yes. where you're supposed to go, what time you're supposed to be there? So mm -hmm. they know where to go. Cause we do, we have an admissions process that can be done the day before. Okay. Most of our spine surgery patients do come in the day before. Um, <clears throat> it's kind of a grueling visit. We do a lot. They meet a lot. They see a lot. Um, we'll do labs, you know, check some blood work if we need it, get more x-rays. We actually get clinical photos of you, so you can always remember what you look like before we did surgery. Mm -hmm. um, you'll meet your inpatient nurse. You'll meet a dietitian. You'll meet somebody from Child Life. Uh, sometimes you will meet one of the um, OR nurses that will talk to you a little bit about the OR happenings. Um, sometimes you'll meet an anesthesiologist the day before. Usually you'll see either your doctor or one of your doctor's um, fellows or residents. And um, then you get to meet the nursing staff upstairs. That's so, I mean, it's so cool because I think that definitely helps with the anxiety part of it. Just yes. Just getting to meet these people and put faces to their names yes. and know that, okay, my child is in really good hands, which we know at Scottish Rite Hospital they really are. Yes, we do, you know, it is, we, you know, we tell all of our families this is a long day, but mm -hmm. by the end of that day, you're going to feel so ready and tired right. of talking about information. You're going to feel good about moving forward right, you're the be next like, day. Let's get it. Yes. Let's get it going. Mm -hmm. Okay. So surgery happens, and, and we talked about the communication during surgery. Mm -hmm. So let's kind of get into what happens after surgery and what is the expectation a parent should have on when they'll be able to be united back with their with So their usually, you know, the kiddos will spend anywhere from, you know, half an hour to an hour or longer in um, recovery or PACU, what we call. Um, and when the kiddos are awake and um, breathing tube is out, we will call the parents, you know, as soon as soon as we can. Okay. Um, and once the kiddos are awake, parents can come back, lay eyes on kiddo, and um, most of the kids don't remember that part. They're yeah. still fuzzy, yeah. um, but we always reassure them that your parents are called the second you're awake. You know, so okay. we do as soon as the kiddo's awake, and everything's looking good, we mm -hmm. we call them back, and then um, parents will say, you know. We're gonna. They will excuse parents in the whole, in the recovery area, and we'll say we're gonna go up to the you know your room in a little bit. So then parents can walk up to the room, and um, then kiddo rolls up to the room shortly thereafter. That's great. So then, what about once they get to the room? Who are they gonna be seeing? Is the person or the nurse? handling them in the PACU or recovery going to be the same as the inpatient nurse that they see in Usually their Usually the nurse who's handling um, everything in recovery mm -hmm. will walk the patient up to okay. the inpatient unit, roll them up in, uh, on their bed, and then they will give the inpatient unit nurse report. You know, okay. this is how it went, this is what happened, this is what, you know, heart rate, everything's been looking like. 
and then that nurse is done. And so really they won't see the recovery room nurse again. And okay. then at that point, the inpatient unit nurse takes over. Takes over. Okay. Mm -hmm. So who else are they seeing when they're in this in the inpatient room? Usually, <laughs> right after is the nurse. A lot of the nurse. Yeah. <laughs> so we yeah. do lots of frequent checks. Um, family can come visit. You know, uh, as long as family's healthy and nobody's sick, because we don't want any sick people around right. our kids mm -hmm. uh, after surgery. But we do try and kind of limit the visitors immediately after surgery until you know kiddos more awake and more aware. Right. Um, so we keep it quiet, keep it restful. Um, but anybody can visit after that. So they'll see the nurse a lot. Um, they'll see some of our patient care techs, you know, and then the doctors and then their fellows and residents will be rounding on them very frequently. So they'll see them a lot too. And I'm sure one, you know, a big thing after surgery is the pain management because you know they're going to be coming out of their, of their state and things aren't going to be as fuzzy. So yes. obviously the nurses have a big kind of part of that and kind of asking them, where's your level of pain yes. and how that. So how is that regulated and what kind of should parents know about the, the really, pain management? Really, I think the clinic nurses do an excellent job of mm -hmm. educating on pain mm -hmm. before the surgery. Okay. Um, what we really want to drive home is that it's it's never going to be pain free, unfortunately. But mm -hmm. there's millions of things we can do to manage your pain, and usually what we expect after scoliosis surgery. It's just really sore and really stiff. So it shouldn't be anything unbearable, mm -hmm. anything that makes you want to pass out, you know, nothing like that. Uh, we do teach the kiddos how to um, assess their pain. So every nurse has a badge with our pain scale on it. Okay. So if the kid even can't remember what the nurse is talking about, <laughs> you know, she can just yes. say, tell me, point to which one. Okay. Um, and we're assessing pain a lot, a lot, yeah. a lot, a lot. I will say we really do have the pain control after spine surgery down to a science. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, got, it's come a long way. We've tried lots of different things for pain, um, and it's gotten really, really good. Yeah. Um, so if there's not enough of something, you know, we'll give a little more of it. If the something that we're giving is not working, we're going to change it and try something else. You know, there's several different ways to get pain medicine to the patient, and, um, you know, like I said, we're constantly assessing and reassessing. Okay. I know, I just skipped over a question that I know you said before we got started that it's a pretty frequent one. Oh, yes. <laughs> kid, parents want to know, or kids want to know, am I going to wake up during surgery? Yes, that, that probably is the number one question that kids ask. And the answer is no. No. We do a lot of things during spine surgery to mm -hmm. make sure that you're asleep. Okay. Number one is the anesthesia. We give you medicine. Um, number two, when you have spine surgery, uh, we want to make sure that your spinal cord is safe at all mm -hmm. times. And part of making sure that your spinal cord is safe is that we hook you up to a machine or a monitor that monitors your spinal cord. So literally, your spinal cord will have its own little waveform on a monitor that somebody watches the whole time. So that also lets us know, you know, that they're asleep, you know, okay. they're not moving. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's another check. And then, you know, there's there's so many eyes and ears right. in the OR. And um, so, no, they're not They're in going good hands. To, yes. Good hands. They're in very good hands. Our <laughs> anesthesiologists are amazing. That's awesome. Amazing. And so, no, we will, we always reassure our kiddos, no. That's good. Not okay. Wake up. <laughs> so after surgery, we, we talked about the pain management. So I know with, you know, the big thing that we've always heard is like the, the getting up after surgery, mm -hmm. you know, obviously your back is a big component of how we can walk mm -hmm. and move around and it probably has to be a little nerve wracking as a patient. Yes. I just had this spine surgery and they want me to walk like yeah. right, right now. So the, I'm sure, you know, does physical therapy be part of that process or is it the nursing staff or is it a little bit of both? Sometimes, sometimes physical therapy can be a, a part of it. Um, sometimes occupational therapy can be a part of it. You know, if a mm -hmm. kiddo uses a wheelchair or uses other gait aids like um, a walker or crutches normally, then yes, PT and um, OT will be involved and will help us start, okay. you know, getting the patient up and moving them around. Um, if it's somebody that is just has, you know, idiopathic scoliosis, then no, the nurses really help that patient get out of the bed. And it's important to know, you know, I think a lot of the kids think that we'll just say, get on up. It's yeah. time to get up. All right, let's go. <laughs> yes. But the nurse helps you through all of it. The nurse yeah. will teach you how to roll, how to prop yourself, how to turn over, you know, all of that. And we help you through every step of the way. The nurse will also teach whoever's gonna take care of the kiddo at home mm -hmm. how to do the same things. So nobody expects the kiddo just to hop out of bed by themselves. Okay. You know, they are sore, they are stiff. That first time out of bed is rough. They're lightheaded, they're dizzy, you know, it just feels bleh. Yeah. But once you get that first time over with, then the rest is usually right. pretty pretty smooth. That's good. Pretty smooth. That kinda is a good transition into 
what parents really need to know about going home after surgery? So really our biggest criteria to go home mm -hmm. are that your pain's under control, your incision looks good, um, you're up and moving, and um, you're eating and drinking. You don't have to be back to normal eating and drinking, but we don't want you vomiting and nauseous going home. Okay. Um, and that, you know, pain's under control, and then um, really we would like for you to have a bowel movement in the hospital. Okay. Um, we have really learned that it's the biggest problem after this surgery is constipation mm -hmm. and, and gut issues. Um, and that's a real struggle. Yeah. Um, it's not pain, it's not infection, you know, it's not any of the things, it's a constipation. So we work really hard on um, constipation issues before surgery and after surgery. There's lots of different things we do. That is a big component of why we make you get up and move around. Okay. Getting up and moving around um, helps with pain and it helps with your lungs. Your lungs have to reinflate and clear out again. And it helps with your tummy because it gets your tummy moving again. Your stomach is the very last thing to wake up from um, anesthesia. And if you really think about it, it's kind of crazy, but if you really think about it, your stomach and your intestines are in a whole new place after we straighten your back out. Yes, I never so thought about it that way. They get angry yeah. and they get... <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing to me right, right. now? Right, and they don't yeah. want to work immediately after mm -hmm. surgery, so we do, we have to kind of get them... Get them moving. Get them going again. Mm -hmm. Okay. And really, I mean, the nurses upstairs are excellent. We have the um, the routine after spine surgery, you know, down. You know, okay. on day one, we know we have to do this. On day two, we know we have to do this. On day three, it's this. And you can really adopt that routine at home. Mm -hmm. You know, we want you up and moving at home. We don't want you staying in the bed. You know, we want you starting to eat and drink more, you know, right. all of those things. And we will. We teach, we're they're very good at educating That's on all great. of that. So should parents be aware or need to have anything special when it comes to driving the, your child home from the hospital? Is there any kind of setup in the car? I mean, you never know. Pillows? Yes. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's really, it's, every patient is a little different. Okay. What is best is to time your drive home around pain medicine. So normally, you know, you get your dose of pain medicine and then hop in the car. Mm -hmm. Most kids usually sleep the whole way home. Yeah. Um, we will help you get into the car. A lot of kids like to recline, mm -hmm. you know. Because the, the straight, stiff, this right. feeling, they don't like that whole. Yeah. So they recline. We pat them up with pillows. If they don't have pillows, we're happy to loan them some pillows and pat them. You know, we want to make sure they're comfortable. Definitely. But pillows are good. Okay. And just, you know, a lot of them like reclining. Okay. So, and if you have, you know, we have kids from all over the place. You know, we have kids that fly, you know, on eight-hour flights. We have kids that drive home, you know, mm -hmm. eight hours. So, it's definitely possible if it's a long trip and, you know, what we recommend is just like we do in the hospital. Every about hour and a half to two hours, mm -hmm. get up, pull over, you know, walk around, yeah. move around, change positions, okay. you know. That's good to know. And mm -hmm. then, I mean, the same thing, what about the bed at home? I mean, is this something that maybe they should be on the couch with more pillows? Like, is there any recommendations or maybe what parents should know about that? There really isn't re any restrictions on <clears throat> your bed after okay. surgery. Um, if your room is upstairs, a lot of times, you know, for the first week after surgery, they'll mm -hmm. relocate down somewhere downstairs. Okay. What really is most important is that um, you're able to get in, in and out safely. So okay. a lot of times if your bed's high, you can use a stool, you know, and we can practice that here in the hospital okay. to get in and out of bed. Um, you don't need a hospital bed. You know, we teach you how to get, it, you know, up and down. We can even go as far as teaching you how to use the sheet underneath you to move and help and assist. Um, but no, no special bed. You just have to make sure they're comfortable. Something okay. too soft is usually not very good. Um, some kiddos do like a recliner though because they do like, <clears throat> they don't, they're not really liking the whole flat thing. So right. they, they do like to recline. So, so I mean, and it just really depends on the patient. That's, it does. that's what this is it all does. about. It does. The most important thing is that, um, you know, you're repositioning in bed so you're not getting stiff. Okay. Um, and that you're able to get in and out safely. And then is there any education on kind of the, the, um, what's covering the incision. Like when they leave here, are they, they have a bandage on, is that something mm -hmm. that they need to come to the hospital to get changed out or is that something the parent or guardian is, is handling for them? They can, the parent or guardian can definitely handle that. Okay. Easy peasy. And we will show you how to do it. I mean, that, that's, I think that's a nerve wracking thing for mm -hmm. everybody who goes home. Yeah. Um, but when you come out of surgery, you have a humongous dressing on, a big fat dressing that gives good pressure to the incision. Okay. But before you go home, we change that dressing, take a really good look at the incision, and then replace it with a really skinny flat dressing okay. so it doesn't feel humongous and uncomfortable. Um, 
the incisions are really, they're long, but they're very skinny, very, very thin. And um, they will put the paper tapes over the incisions in the OR, so those little starry strips. Okay. So there'll be lots of paper tapes. You don't have to mess with those. They can fall off on their own. Okay. Um, and we'll show you how to put a new dressing back on. And so, and every doctor differs in the types of dressing that that they like to use mm -hmm. and how frequently they want you to change it, you know, all of that stuff. But, um, but yes, we do teach you that. We do enable, you know, you to, to do that. And we send you home with some dressings. That's great. Mm -hmm. But what about showering? You know, is that something that they can do? I mean, are they bathed? Is it more of kind of a bathing situation? So it's definitely dressing? showering. So okay. no soaking that incision in any water for okay. a good, you know, Probably four weeks or so. Okay. And again, every every surgeon is different. Mm -hmm. um, but really, we want you showers only okay. because we don't want that incision underwater. Because if you have the incision underwater, it can get infected. Okay. So showers only. Um, usually, what's easiest is if you get in the shower with your back dressing on and let you know just let it get wet and um, kind of loosen up. And mm -hmm. then after shower, you know, take that dressing off, pat dry, and then replace the dressing if it's, okay. if you still need to replace the dressing. Right. But yes, you can shower, you can wash hair, you don't do anything special to the incision for about, you know, four to six weeks. So no creams or lotions to the incision. You can wash your hair. It's most helpful to have a, like a little a stool or mm -hmm. a chair, like even like a lawn chair in the shower okay. the first couple of times because the kids get very lightheaded, very dizzy mm -hmm. um, those first couple of showers. So we always say, you know, somebody, mom or dad, somebody has to be right beside you the yeah. first couple of times. Building that strength back up. Mm -hmm. So I think we have two more questions. Okay. Will the patient have a scar from surgery, which I think you kind of talked about, but I mean, is it something that, I mean, everyone's kind of different depending on yes. the type of surgery. Yes. But they will. They will. They will have a scar. Um, it's actually a very, as far as scars go, it's a very nice scar. Yeah. Um, it's usually long and thin, very, mm -hmm. very thin. And if you take care of it, it will really heal up and be and flatten out. And it just looks like a <clears throat> faint pencil mark down the middle of your spine. Okay. So it's one one straight line down the middle of your spine. Do we, you know, do you guys kind of offer anything in terms of suggestions on kind of the scar care afterwards? You know, incision is all healed up, everything's good, you know, in terms of maybe making sure that the scars like doesn't stay too dark or, yes. you know, yes. something like that. It's very important to remember for two years after surgery, at least, and really it, it can't hurt <laughs> ever, mm -hmm. but for two years after surgery, at least, um, to cover your incision with sunscreen okay. or a shirt when you're out in the sun. Okay. Because that the that scar is new skin, and if you discolor that new skin with the sun, it will stay permanently discolored. So okay. you really have to protect it from the sun. Okay. That is the biggest uh, the reason why we want you to keep it out um, of you know out of the water and no submerging mm -hmm. is because that lets it heal very tightly. Okay. We call it you know heal and seal. We want it to heal and seal up really well to get those edges to heal up really well, um, and if you keep it drier. It heals better, so the cleaner and the drier, the better. Whenever you're talking about a back dressing or a, a, you know a surgery scar, the cleaner, the drier, the better. That's great. And every surgeon, you know, has a different um, time frame on when they let you start to put, um, you know, Mederma, aloe vera, vitamin E on the incision. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's all something that they will learn from from their doctor, depending yes. on who it is. Yes. Perfect. Uh -huh. Okay. So last one of the day. We know surgery that there's going to be some kind of metal device yes. in these patients nice like we metal. can kind of see <laughs> here. So people want to know, patients want to know, is that going to set off metal detectors? Sometimes, sometimes it will. Yeah. Sometimes it will. You know, one of our surgeons, uh, Dr. McIntosh, has a really good theory about that. Mm -hmm. um, she thinks that because the metal is in the middle of your body mm -hmm. and not on a shoulder or a knee, and if it's in the middle, and when you're going through, it's less likely to go off because okay. it's in the middle. So it's kind of hidden in your body a little bit. But sometimes, yeah, you will. Okay. We don't give out cards anymore, you know, we, about the implants. Um, usually, you know, if somebody stops you and says you're dinging, you say, well, I have a spine, I had a spine surgery. And mm -hmm. they can either see the scar on your back or they can run you through that full body x-ray machine. Mm -hmm. And they'll so, see it. Mm -hmm. they'll see. <laughs> yep, well, yep, yep. But that, that's a good question. That's a very popular question. Yeah. 
Well, I'm so happy. This is, I mean, this has been a great segment. I think that Good, parents so. really are going to learn from this and even from parents and patients that come in in the future who, yeah. you know, scoliosis surgery or just being a spine patient at Scottish Rite Hospital. So yeah. we really appreciate you joining sure, us scoliosis today. is my favorite, favorite, yes. favorite. And it's great because we're still celebrating Scoliosis Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. um, next week is our last week and we'll be back with Dr. Scotto on Monday. So stay tuned.